Hello, and welcome to Mythical Entertainment Interviews. I'm your host, Jeremy Snow, though you may know me as Mithrandial. Today, John Swayze joins us to discuss his most recent role as Kumatetsu in The Boy and the Beast and share some of his stories from over 20 years in the voice acting business. So let's just kind of uh, start at the beginning. How did you get started with voice acting? Um, well, I, uh, I, when I graduated from college in 87, mm-hmm. uh, so now you all can start <laughs> dating how old I Age am. Age check, math. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really want, you know, my goal was to be, uh, uh, my goal was to be on Broadway. I mean, that's what I really wanted to do. Wow. And then I, but I moved back to Houston and I started doing some, uh, commercials and did a little stage work, did some commercials and film work and, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then one day I um, started doing voice work mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, man, I really, something about this I really like. Maybe it was the fact that I, I didn't have to bathe or <laughs> I didn't, you know, I whatever. But right. um, so, um, you know, fast forward to about 94, 95. Mm-hmm. And I really started to do some very intensive marketing of myself to various entities like advertising agencies and production houses and things like that. And I uh, was primarily uh, doing voiceover. I was that's what I was marketing myself as. I was sending out a demo tape, uh-huh. and um, of course you know this is before websites and all that kind of stuff so right, right. Uh, i we just know, didn't exist yet <laughs> yeah i just sort of found myself um getting more and more voice work and and it turns out i was uh you know fairly proficient at it and uh, ended up landing a couple of really big accounts and got some got in with some really big advertising agencies here in houston and mm-hmm. in 1996 um, somebody said, Hey, you ought to audition for this company called ADV. And I said, well, what's, <laughs> what's ADV? And they said, well, oh, they do, they do anime. And I was like, well, what, what the heck is anime? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, uh, so I auditioned and I actually had a terrible audition, hmm. um, because I didn't understand the process, uh, of ADR. I didn't understand, you know, even what I was looking at. I, I just didn't get it. And so I, I, they said, well, thank you for coming in. Right. <laughs> you know? Our people will call your people. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And, uh, so I left and I sat in my car for like 10 minutes mm-hmm. and, uh, David Williams, uh, was running the audition. Um, and he, uh, I, we, we talked about this at a convention earlier this year, but, um, I got out of my car and I walked back in I said, Hey, could I give it another shot? And they're like, well, sure. Uh, you're going to have to wait though. Cause we have other people. And I said, okay. So I sat there for like an hour just waiting to go back in. And when I went back in, I just started doing funny voices and, and really kind of put all apprehension, uh, aside through caution to the wind and just went berserko. And they were like, Oh wow. Well, that was great. Thank you. That was much better. Yes. (laughs) Yes. You're like, you should have done that the first time. Right. (laughs) Right. Exactly. So, um, so I started doing, I started getting cast at ADV and I, you know, just happened to be, um, along with a bunch of other people or a handful of other people, but just happened to be in the right place at the right time, you know, starting with this, this new anime production company that happened to be based in Houston, Texas. And I happened to be there and, you know, the, the rest, as they say is history. So I, you know, came up along with Greg and Chris Ayers and Vic Mignogna and Lucy Christian and Monica Rial and, Chris Patton and you know we were all sort of this the, this the, uh, group in fact we used to talk about it. it's like man I wish they just like the rat pack of uh, voice actors <laughs> yeah right exactly exactly and I I wish that you know we used to always joke about it's too bad they don't go to like the old studio system where they just they just hire us you know and then they use us however they want you know right, right. instead of show by show it's just you get salaried and and we'll pay you x amount of dollars a week and we'll use you and abuse you as we see fit. So (laughs) just employ you. uh, Anyway, so that's kind of led, you know, then of course, uh, as just historically in in a linear fashion, you know, things changed and then Funimation started to come on the rise and uh, Uh uh, a lot of Houston actors or not a lot, again, some Uh were going up to Dallas to uh, work there in Fort Worth. And uh, 
I got lucky enough to go up there and, and, you know, um, started landing some roles and, and one of the things that's always been good for me, I guess, in my advantage, uh, is that I've, I can do a lot of different voices. And so I've, I'm more of a character actor than I am a lead. Uh huh. And so, so I, that's afforded me the, yeah, yeah. So I've been able to go up and do, you know, Hey, we need, we need an old guy. We need this character. We need that. And we'll get Swayze to do it. So, right. um, anyway, that's kind of, that's kind of how it's gone. And, you know, of course now there's the, it's so interesting that the, the business is, is more prolific than ever, mm-hmm. but there's also literally thousands more actors available. <laughs> so, right, right. you know, it's, and, and YouTube I understand, demos you know, it's like, and all that other stuff, like people just recording the voices and, you know, different, different avenues of, of getting there. <laughs> Right, right, right. And, and, you know, it's like, it's, it, it, you just don't have the, you know, we need, we need six different characters and just get Swayze to do them. It's like, well, no, we'll just get six different actors. I mean, we don't need, and I understand that it's a, it's a bummer in right. some th- ways, but it's, it is the reality. And that's why I'm really so excited about, uh, the boy and the beast, because in, you know, 20 years of doing this, um, this is to my the best of my recollection. I think this is literally the first lead character I've ever had. This is certainly the biggest, mm-hmm. the biggest role I've ever had. Right. So uh, line wise, but you did play. You've you've been Gendo Ikari and you've been Hohenheim as well in the past, correct? So I mean, you've had some of the the bigger, maybe no, noticeable characters, just maybe not, not as many lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, Lord Death and Soul Eater and, and yeah. Crocodile and One Piece. And, yeah. you know, I yeah. mean, there's a, there's certainly a litany of uh, characters that like people I, like, I, I remember you from this or that. Like, yeah, but the, definitely the presence in, in the movie you, you had. Uh, right. Yeah. The but but to be the, <laughs> to be the actual, you know, one of the two leads, I, right. I, you know, this is probably now I've done live action. I've done a lot of leads. Uh-huh. Um, but you know, those are, those aren't as nearly as popular as, as anime <laughs> is. So. Right. Right. Um, but anyway, yeah. I, and I'm, you know, and there's, I don't say that with any regret or anything like that. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, my wife puts it, you know, if Vic Mignogna is the Brad Pitt of anime, uh-huh. I'm the, I'm the Kevin Bacon. <laughs> hey man. Everyone loves Kevin Bacon. I know, right? <laughs> right? So, you know, yeah. Awesome. You can do six degrees of John Swayze in anime. There you go. <laughs> um, so speaking speaking of voice acting, um, when you went, maybe when you went into it, what what's one thing about voice acting that you didn't expect? What's something about voice acting that really took you by surprise, either, either positive or negative? Uh, yeah. So I, um, I think what really took me by surprise was initially the level of acting that you actually have to do. Mm. And, and, and now when I teach, you know, other people to do voice acting or, or whatever, I, you know, it's acting. And, you know, I think there's sort of a, uh, if you're not, if you don't know it, you know, there's sort of a feeling of, well, I'm in a booth and, you know, I'm looking out a window maybe, or, right. And I'm in front of a microphone. I can just kind of stand here and it's all in my voice. Right. And it's like, no, mm-hmm. it's not. It's, it's you, you're on a stage, you're in front of a camera, you're whatever. It just happens to be, you're in a booth and, and a microphone, you know, but it's, it has to have the same level of intensity and the same, um, emotional stake, uh, that you would do, you would need if you were in front of someone, whether it be, uh, like I said, on a stage or in front of a camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that was something that really, you know, took me, didn't take me by surprise so much. It was just, I had to discover that once I, once I understood that, um, that it made the acting, the voice acting part a lot easier. Right. And, uh, you know, it was able to manifest itself and through your voice if you can do things like physicalize what's going on and, you know, making those gestures, like still making the gestures like you were talking to somebody directly. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, looking in, in, in doing anime, you know, cause you're doing ADR, but you know, so look at the character, what is the character doing? You know, physically, what is that character doing? And when they say their line, 
what does that animated character look like and and mimic that i mean that's you know that's you know it's just very very helpful so that was that was a great uh revelation for me for sure right so when you're you know learning these things about voice acting as you've been kind of evolving over your your very uh long career what's been your most challenging role to date would you say and why was that uh such a such a challenge for you um the a lot of roles have been challenging uh for, for various reasons. reasons yeah yeah um but and, and you know i also will say and i hope this doesn't sound like a pompous ass <laughs> uh-huh. but you know it's it's something that comes fairly easy to me so i'm mm-hmm. not i'm not really stretching myself like and I don't think you have to always stretch yourself to make a good performance. I don't mean right, like, right. I'm, I don't mean, I certainly don't mean to imply, oh, I can just phone it in and it's going to be awesome. That's right. not what I mean at all. Right. I'm just saying that it's, for me, I, I enjoy doing it so much that it's not uh, a workout. You know what I mean? It's not, right. it's not like, God, what is yeah. this over? Yeah. You know? I mean, now, a, I a pro say, basketball player can sink a shot, you know, like pretty easily. Like they don't have to like, it's not like that was the hardest shot I've ever had to make. Right, you know? right, so right. after a while, you kind of, you know, the tools you need to use. I know, exactly. That's exact, yeah. exactly the right way to put it. I know the tools. I know what tools to grab. Right. You know, I know how to equip myself to get a certain character, a certain performance and that kind of thing. Now, I will say um, that there was one character <clears throat> named Gosaburo mm. in My Bride is a Mermaid. And mm-hmm. uh, it was directed by Ian Sinclair, who's a fabulous director mm-hmm. uh, with Funimation and a fabulous actor. He's also in Boy and the Beast, as yes. a matter of fact. Yeah, I, I was reaching out really to him. I really wanted to get him on. <laughs> I wanted to talk to him about it, but uh, he didn't get back to me. But yeah, continue. Uh, well, stay on him because uh, he's, a, he's a fascinating uh, human being and a, a very, very gifted and talented actor. But um, uh, anyway, he was directing me in this thing. And uh, Gosaburo's character, he's the father. And every line, and I mean every line, he screams, he yells like at the top of his lungs, like blood spewing forth kind of yelling. Yikes. And, um, so when we recorded and I'm going to say, you know, on this particular day, I had six hours of recording mm-hmm. and it really turned out that it wasn't six hours worth of lines. It was about six two hours. hours worth of lines, right. but we had to stop about every 15 minutes and take, I'm not kidding you take a 30 to 45 minute break yeah. just so my vocal cords could rest yeah. because I would be, I would ruin my vocal cords mm-hmm. and he understood that. So he was like, you know, that's why we did this. But every single line was just, <laughs> you know, and I, I can't do it right now. I'm sitting outside in my backyard. Right. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't want to alert the police or anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a real challenge. That was a real, that was hard. And that's where, that's where the, you know, that's really where a challenge can be physically demanding, Mm -hmm. you know, other challenges you might face are certainly, you know, finding the right voice. Um, but that's, you know, it's not a, it's nothing to freak out about. I know when we did, uh, soul leader and, uh, Zach Bolton was the director and, and I did not know the show at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, I'm thinking Lord Death. Uh-huh. Okay, well, he's he's going to be, you know, everything else that I do, just, rah, 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 you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Zach was like, no, 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 listen to the Japanese, you know. And and so I did, and I was like, oh, so he's, he's more up here. It's silly. Yeah. And uh, they were like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, even once we found that voice, when we started recording, uh, once I got cast, because that was just an audition, but once I got cast, um, we, uh, we would, I think we recorded probably 30 or 40 minutes and he said, you know what? You're in the zone with the voice. Now that's where the voice needs to be. Uh I'd like to go back and start over and get those first, you know, 30 lines again. In that mode you're in now now. that you're in that mode. Exactly. 
exactly. channel channel what you're where you're at now and bring let's bring it back to the beginning and, and make it exactly consistent. so yeah, yeah so we had a consistency and a and a continuity to it so that's awesome. um yeah that's that's he, Zach's a fun fun director to work with too <laughs> yeah, so I mean what do you, what do you tell people who insist that they they don't enjoy dubbed work I mean what do you what do you do like are there are there shows that you would point to and say here's a really good quality dub give it a try uh, because you know, as you were mentioning, you you came up with a lot of really great voice actors, and I'm sure you want people to hear their work and all the hard work they're they're doing. So, so what kind of things do you point to? What kind of things do you say to help? Well, okay. The the first thing I tell somebody mm-hmm. who would come to me at a panel and right. say, you know, I don't like dubs. I only listen to subs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the first yeah. thing I would say is, well, why the hell are you at my panel? Because <laughs> right. I'm a dub. I'm a dubbing actor. Right. Why would you be? Why would you be here? Yeah. Exactly. But um, you know, in in all honesty, yeah. I I have not really run into that. Okay. Um, I certainly know it exists, mm-hmm. and there's that um sort of uh, uh, you know, I think it's a little pretentious to go. You know, I'm I only look at the subs. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm I, but if you do, then that's fine. You right. know, um, I am a big proponent of um you know the japanese actors Mm -hmm. created the role right and so we're simply dubbing in the english so we owe it to the production and we certainly owe it to the actors who originated the role Mm -hmm. to be as close to their performance as possible because they created that performance Mm -hmm. we're just putting it into another language i mean we're not you know it's not like, okay, I'm going to be the best Lord Death ever. Yeah. You know, it's not, not that. It's like, that, I, need right. to, I need to listen to what that actor did, and I need to be true to what that actor did as close as I can, you know, as close as the director here will let me. Um, and there's obviously, there's going to be some nuances and, and changes because of just the language itself. You're going right. from you you know, Japanese to English. There's, you know, but the other thing too, and I will say this, and I, I, this is something that, um, I used to not really, I didn't really think about it, but, um, because I used to think, you know, we're just, we're just, we're the only, we're dub actors, you know, it's not that big a deal. But I think if you look at the proliferation and explosion in popularity of anime right now, right. I think you would be very, very in the wrong and remiss if you did not attribute some of that popularity growth right. to the dubbing world, because you might love it. But you know what? I don't. What is, you might love anime, but if you don't like watching subtitles, you're probably not going to watch it. Right. And so you know, I I I think that uh, the dubbing community um, has played a hugely significant role in in the growth uh, of the industry. And I think that uh, you know there are people, lots and lots of people, who like the Japanese. But they also really like the English. And it's and I think because of the reason behind that might be, and this is pure speculation on my part, but it's because we speak English here and it gives us a little bit of ownership of the of the property. Of the you media. know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not physical ownership like, oh, it's part <laughs> mine. But I mean it now I'm I have something invested in it, you know, and right. and that kind of thing. So I think that, uh, I think it's, you know, if you, but if you, if you're somebody who's like, well, I only look at dubs, I mean, at subs, then fine. Good for you. As a matter of fact, you know, boy and the beast is being released in theaters, March the 4th, everyone. Yeah. Um, get your ticket. but it is, Funimation it's in a dual com. release of subtitle and dub. Mm-hmm. So and it's, and it's the first time they're, is it, it's the first time they're doing that. Is that right? Or like releasing the dub, um, or have I, they done that previously? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think it may be the first time, you know, I think I, so. in fact, I think, I'll just say yeah. it is because yeah. I don't know. And, and I'd like to be part of something that is the first. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, I, I think, I think more because we had our interview with Morgan uh, a couple days ago and I think she had said something about that. Um, so yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to revisit that and, and clarify. But, um, so what is your favorite 
dubbed work, just a show or a movie that you thought, you know what, they did a great job with that dub. Um, yeah, what what's one that you would point to? Well, it would have to be the boy and the beast. And, uh, <laughs> and okay, okay. Was, own, own work was extraordinary. <laughs> own work excluded. How about that? Oh, I, okay. I, I would agree with you. No, uh, but <clears throat> yeah, you know. Uh, so you know, I'm I'm 51, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll be 52 this year. So you know, I grew up on Speed Racer. Okay. And yeah. uh, but I missed uh, Robotech. Oh. Okay. That was that was in my college years, and I just wasn't. You know, I was not into that at the time. So I, I was, a, I was, a, I was a little too old for that. You know, it, I missed it. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I say I have a favorite would be, uh, I don't know because you know, the, <laughs> okay, the yeah. also, you know, the dubbing, the dubbing process is mm. it's evolved so much. I mean, uh, there's, uh, the, the process now is so highly efficient and, and so precise now, you know, you're not, and it, and it's not cheesy. Uh, you know, I mean, I love speed racer as a kid, but you know, no one in, in anime today goes, Oh, 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 you know? <laughs> yeah. And they don't have those filler sounds. And yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's more real, you know? So, I mean, the, the stuff that they're doing now is, is really good. And, you know, companies are a lot more precise about, you know, working at Funimation, you know, they're just, they are very, very particular about the lip flaps, you know, um, almost to the point of like, really, <laughs> I mean, I don't think they're paying that close attention, right? but you know what it's, I think, um, when it comes to that kind of thing, it's like, let's not give anybody a reason to, to think, oh, the, the, the dub is off or something like that. Right. So they, they make sure, but anyway, that is kind of a, a long roundabout way to not answer your question, but, uh, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. So I, I don't, yeah, I don't, but I, to truth be told, I don't really have a favorite that, uh, a favorite dub. And, and the other thing too, to be honest with you, just because of the good fortune of being who I am, where I am and the timeline of what I've done, there's a, a bunch of them that I'm in, so I don't really know many that I'm not in, <laughs> unless they were done on the West Coast, right? Or right. or Pokemon in New York or something like that. Yeah. So Pokemon's uh, not your favorite. Oh, um, yeah, it's my son's favorite. <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, transition into this uh, into your most recent work. So how how did you learn about the Boy and the Beast? Well, it's a great story to me. Um, back in like. September or something like that. I got a, uh, uh, instant message from some fan and it said, Hey, um, I just saw that Funimation got the rights to the boy and the beast. And I think you would be great as Kumatetsu. Oh, well, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you. That's not the way it works, but thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And so I closed that and immediately opened up a text to Mike McFarland <laughs> and I said, Hey, I understand you guys are doing the boy and the beast. And I was just wondering what, you know, is it, has it been cast? Are right. you, you know, what's the story? And, and he, you know, uh, let me stew in my own juices for a couple of days and, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, yeah. finally came. And of course I'm thinking I forgot about it, but then I was thinking like, Oh, well it's probably been cast. Yeah. And it also, um, I didn't really know the 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 level of the show i didn't i mean i knew it was uh hosada but i didn't know how big a deal it was right and which is probably probably worked in my favor mm -hmm. but um anyway a day or two later uh he shoots me back a text and he says yeah uh we're you know nothing's been done so far but i'll let you know when we have auditions and blah 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 right i said great Cool. Didn't think anything of it about a month goes by and I get an email from Funimation saying, Mike would like you to audition for the role of Kumitetsu. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sweet. Uh -huh. So uh, a good friend of mine, Afshar, uh, who used to be my engineer at ADV when, when I was directing there. So I called him up and I said, hey, man, I got this audition and uh you know, I had done a little bit of research on it and really kind of started to get uh, the gravity of the situation. And I was like, you know, this is a big deal. This is uh, this is a lead character. Mm -hmm. Finally, I went over to Afshar's and we spent a couple hours, I think, mm -hmm. working on it. And um, 
uh, then I sent it off and, uh, you know, with the proverbial, and if you need anything else, let me know, I can <laughs> right. change anything you don't quite like, you know, yeah, and yeah. The, the, please, the pre, please love the me, pre, <laughs> the pre ass kiss, you know, yeah, and I was yeah. like, um, so then, um, I guess in about, that would have been maybe early November. So then kind of uh, maybe two, two and a half weeks later, I get an email saying, uh, Mike needs to book you for like 24 hours of recording for boy and the beast. <laughs> and I mean, I looked at that email and I just sat there for a minute and I was like, okay, usually when I go up to Funimation, it's like, we need you for seven hours, you know, two hours on this show, an hour on that show, three hours on this show, 30 minutes on, you know, I'm just kind of studio hopping. Right. And so I uh, sat there for a little bit and I was like, okay, either I don't know the movie well enough, or this means that I got the role. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so I texted Mike and I said, Hey, I just heard you need me for 24 hours. Does that mean what I think it means? And again, he let me stew in that for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what a <jerk. laughs> And uh, he, 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 he replied back, he goes, yes, it does. Congratulations. Awesome. And what I didn't know was that all the voices had to go back to Japan to be approved by the Japanese director. Yeah. So I just really felt... Um, I've done good. You know, I was like, wow, this isn't just, Hey, I've worked for Funimation. They like me. I like them. Oh, John, would be great for it. Just, it was like, no, this went back to across the world and the director picked the voices who would do the English. And I was like, wow, that to me was the biggest. It goes, it goes back to what you were saying before. I mean, you were saying, you know, these, these voice actors, they create, you know, and the director, even more so, right? They create that role. And for Hosada to hear your voice and say, yes, like of, of all the different auditions, like that's Kumatetsu's voice. Um, right. Must, must have been a, right. real, and, yeah, and, a real honor. Man, and that was one that was one I listened to. I listened to that Japanese actor and I tried to just really nail it. And mm -hmm. I, I obviously, I guess I did. But, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, it was... Uh, it was, that was a big, big thing. And so then I went up to Dallas and I've got some friends up there and I stayed there and then I started to learn about, you know, the, I, I don't know if it worked, but they were trying to submit it for Academy Award consideration. Uh -huh. And, you know, um, I think they had done that with Summer Wars and they made it, you know, to a certain level and then it just, it didn't go beyond that. Right. And it's, and it's not just to be fair, it's not the dub version it's just the movie itself right you know so yeah, yeah. it's not if it would have made it or if it would have won or anything like that mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been because of the work i did yeah yeah it just <laughs> it would, be, it would be more yeah. just to be say i'm associated with it would have been a cool thing yeah. but uh anyway so yeah that was that was huge for me and i've you know kind of been um you know, for the month of December, I was kind of floating on a cloud because I was up from Dallas for three or four days recording. And, um, you know, then it's, you know, now coming out and it's just been a, it's been great. And I'm, you know, uh, I just, I hope that, um, it's going to be as well received as, as I hope it will be. I mean, I, I've certainly heard nothing but exciting things about it. And, and, you know, thank you all for the wonderful write up. I mean, that was such a such a nice thing. It um, made my kids thrilled. So oh, I was that right? <laughs> well, well, it made it made me thrilled okay. to be honest with you. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was cool. I and I, I'm just you know, I mean, I know uh, things like that don't come lightly, and mm -hmm. and you know, so I I feel like, uh, uh, I, I, but I, I got to tell you, mm -hmm. and I, I really do mean this with mm -hmm. from the bottom of my heart, I this project was so much fun. Mike McFarland is, he was the very first director I ever worked with at Funimation, uh, when I did, uh, full metal alchemist. Right. And, you know, he is a director who, and they're all good directors up there. I'm not, he, you know, he's, we get that question, who's your favorite director? And it's like, yeah. well, I don't really have a favorite. I mean, they're all fun to work with, <laughs> they're all but, great, yeah. but on this one, you know, 
just the, the, the level of intensity and, and kind of every, it just seemed like everyone really kind of knew what was at stake, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, it ended up not happening, but the Japanese were actually going, supposed to be here for the recording of at least Kumitetsu and, uh, um, oh God, yeah. yeah, so, um, but that ended up not working out, but, mm-hmm. uh, uh, which is fine. That would have driven me nuts. I would have been so nervous. You know? <laughs> were, you, were you at the premiere in LA or no? Were you at the no, no, no. Um, and I'm, I, you know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed, you know, uh-huh. but I don't think it was, uh, um, I mean, and I don't know, but I, I didn't get the feeling like it was a big, big premiere. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it was a, a smaller thing. Yeah. And uh, for I, little for media outlets like ourselves, <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> to, right, to get a right, chance right. to get a peek and and tell everyone how awesome it is. Um, <laughs> did you go? Yes. Were you there? Yeah, yeah. My well, um, did you tell me how was it? <laughs> so you okay? So Morgan was telling me the same thing. So you still haven't had a chance to watch the movie? No, I have not. I've, the only thing I've seen is the trailer. Oh my god. Um. Well. You read my review. You saw how much I liked it. Well, uh, yes, and apparently so. I walked away with the hardware. So thank you. Yeah, I'm yeah, you that. you did you did a, an amazing job, and um, I I really look forward to your opportunity to see it in the theaters because it's it's uh, something really special. So well, um, that, I, 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 I think really, that's so weird. Thank you. I think that's thank really you. I think that's really strange. Uh, not strange, but I guess it's like I imagined all of you would you know finish up your work. You know, oh, that's a wrap, and and everyone just kind of goes into a. A, a room at the end of everything and sits down with a bucket of popcorn and and just says hey you know here's our project but i guess uh I, i'm learning a thing or two about <laughs> what that process looks like um but yeah well I, uh, you know uh you know i mean uh, you know the actors when we're done i mean there, you know there's still so much work to do mm-hmm. you know right uh and i know mike spent a great deal of time on the mix and the uh, that kind of thing that, you know, the actors aren't generally involved. The only way an actor would be involved is if, you know, there were pickups or something like that. Right. But, um, I'm, I was hoping, and I, I'm still kind of holding out, although that, uh, that, that, that ship may have sailed. Um, but I was hoping that they were going to have at least a Dallas premiere and invite the voice actors up and say, Hey, right. let's, uh, let's do this because Funimation, um, you know, has always been really good at, at that type of thing. Right. You know, that yeah. they, they like to do a little pomp and circumstance and, yeah. and show how awesome their properties are. And I was like, well, that'd be fun, you know, to yeah. go up to Dallas. And I, you know, I haven't heard anything. Maybe but you should still... have texted to, to uh, McFarlane and see if he lets you stew in those juices for a couple of days before it gets back. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I've actually, well, I've asked him about it and he yeah. said, well, I think we're doing something, but I'm not sure. And then, you know, uh, then, you know, then he's like, well, I'm off to LA to go see this. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, have fun. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I have mean, fun without me, I know, I know you can't bring the whole cast, but maybe you could have brought me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, maybe you could have brought me and Eric. Hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway. So yeah, speaking of, of your work is, as Hohenheim, um, as Gendo Ikari in the past, now Kumatetsu, you've you've had the opportunity to voice a lot of these father figures. Um, as a father yourself, what are some things that you think about when you're voicing these roles? Like, what kind of what inspiration are you bringing to those roles? Um, that these uh, these anime children are far better behaved than my actual children. Ah. <laughs> uh. Really? All of them? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Yeah, um, not even a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, I, I do tend to play a lot of fatherly figures and, um, you know, some good, some not so good. And I <laughs> think it's worst ever. I don't know if you read my uh, Ava 3.33 review, but um, <laughs> yeah, he, it's Gen- it, Gendo. Yeah, well, yeah it, Gendo is, is not... constantly in the running for worst dad ever. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, then you could look at it, maybe his, maybe by being such a jerk and so hard and, you know, so that, that it's, it's helped his son, yeah, you know, I don't maybe. know. It's, it's, it's built character. Yeah. It's, you know, um, again, though, I'll go back to, um, you know, we, um, we can draw on those experiences, but at the end of the day, we're also, like I said, we're, we're mimicking, um, 
you know, we have to look at what the original actor did and, you know, how did they perform the, the, the scene? And, and you have to sort of, you know, I can't, I couldn't sit there and go, well, I did not really agree with the way that was voiced. I'm going to do it my own way because I, I see Gendo's arc going like this. Yeah. You know, you can't really do that. Like, you this have is to, Gendo's inspiration. This is how I decided to bring him to life. There's a little bit more of a, right, right. An I mean, obligation and, and, and I'll be honest with you, you know, Gendo is a, a great example. Um, as is Hohenheim. Mm -hmm. It's, there are two very similar, similar things for me mm -hmm. in that, um, both are characters that I replaced the original actor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so in, in both cases, it was like, well, first of all, try to sound like the guy. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, not, you're not, 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 not replacing, it. you know, yeah, you're not a, su you're not subbing in a Japanese voice. You're literally replacing another English voice. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, you know, in, yeah. in Gendo it was, I'm, I'm replacing Tristan McCavery who was let go, you know, in, yeah. in, in Hohenheim, I'm replacing Scott McNeil, you know, mm -hmm. because he can't get a work visa. And, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like, so, and it was never like, uh, we want you to mimic that voice. But it was um, really try to capture the essence of what that voice is, right. and so that's what that's kind of what led me down those paths. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I mean, it's it's but but being a father, you know, you can you certainly understand that uh, you know even in anger there is love, and mm -hmm. even in love you can get angry, and and you know there can be all kinds of emotions that that run through the, you know, run the gamut of your body and your, your, your soul, um, as a parent. And, right. but ultimately, um, and I even think with Gendo, I think it's there. Ultimately there is some degree of love. Uh -huh. There has <laughs> to be, I mean, yeah. unless you're just a complete monster, yeah. which Gendo which, could be, which I, it could know. happen. It could be. Yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, well, we're just about just about done here. But um, before I let you go, I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk to us a little bit about any projects that you're currently working on. Um, you know, con conventions that you'll be at, uh, ways people can come and see you and tell you how how much they loved you in uh, in the Boy <laughs> Beast. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you just want to share a little bit about what what's next for sure, you. Sure, sure. Well, I live in Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. and um, you can just come to my house and tell me how much you love me. That's <laughs> I've got beer in the fridge here, yeah. and then you can you're welcome to make yourself at home. Um, yeah. So well, thank you very much. Yeah, I've got um, you know, as an actor, you know, we're always working on projects, and I've got. I've got two projects right now that are very near and dear to me. Um, uh, one is uh, I've uh, co-written with a friend of mine. Uh, we've written a children's book, mm. and it's the first book in a series uh, called Jungle Berg. Okay. And um, we're doing a Kickstarter campaign, but I'm a fr I don't know when this is going to air, but I will think that my Kickstarter campaign will have ended by then, so I'm not not, I don't need to pimp that, but yeah. when does it a, end? Cause, cause this is when, up Wednesday, Wednesday at four o'clock. <laughs> okay. It might be up for about 12 hours. <laughs> okay. Well, if you go to Kickstarter and look up Jungleberg with an H at the end, uh, and you know, there's still time, please give, uh, but even if we don't make it, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. We've got a plan B and, and, uh, that kind of thing, but it's, a it's a, basically, it's a children's book for children that are learning to read, and it has an audio component uh, with voice actors and things like that that, that um, you know, not just a narration, but actually act out the story. Mm. And um, the, the ultimate goal is to do about three books a year and um, get them in the hands of, of little children and hopefully inspire that love to read because... Our, our, one of the tenets of our, uh, our existence in this enterprise is that there's really no substitute for a physical book in a child's hand. You know, we've got readers and we've got tablets and we've got computers and yeah. screens and blah, 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 but physically hold or holding a physical book right. and turning the pages is just a, you know, we just, that's something that'll be here forever. And we, we, we think it's important. So, uh, that's, that's one project. Uh, the first book is about Zeke, the spider monkey who okay. needs, who, who needs glasses because he keeps swinging into things. Okay. But, um, 
Lucy Christian is one of the voices, and uh, Jay Hickman is another voice, and then uh, Blake Shepard is doing one of the voices, and he's also our animator, our illustrator, I should say. <laughs> and um, then eventually, you know, I'd love to see this turn into an animation down the road once we've gotten enough stories completed. So um, that's that's one project. Okay. And then the, the second project is a, a deal I'm working on with Jay Hickman and um, a couple other folks. Uh, and it is a movie called The Perfect Con. And Con is spelled K H A N. Okay. And this is an animation, a CG animation uh, that we got the rights to. And we've rewritten the entire thing. And it's, it's a, you know, very adult humor uh, type of uh, spy, whodunit. Double crisscross, double cross, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. uh, deal in it, but it's it's very funny, and uh, we're uh, in the final stages mixing it right now, and we're talking to some distributors, and hopefully it'll be out um, probably sometime at towards the end of summer, if not sooner. But uh, um, so those are the two those are the two deals I'm working on right now. And then convention wise, um, going to Anime Crossroads this weekend in okay. Indianapolis. All right. And um, uh, going to AFO in August. Uh, going to Anime Matsuri or Matsuri Con, excuse me, in Columbus in uh, August. And uh, then I've got a couple other cons: uh, Bayou City Con in Sulphur, Louisiana which is not far from here. So I'm looking forward to that. And, um, a uh, couple other ones, uh, Are you making your way out to the West coast at all? Going to come out to an uh, expo yeah. comic con, anything like yeah, that? Yeah. You know, right now. So what I'm doing is, uh, I was just talking to my wife about this is I've, I've got my schedule out and I'm, uh, in the process of contacting conventions. Um, I'm going to kind of let March, uh, I've got, I think I've got one in March, Mm -hmm. And, you know, but I've, I'm very involved with the Houston livestock show and rodeo and it runs through most of March. So I'm going to probably not do, but, uh, I'll be contacting conventions and and that kind of thing. And I'm, to be honest with you, I'm really hoping that, um, once the boy and the beast comes out that, uh, that will sort of elevate they'll come, my, they'll come, my in, they'll come looking bit. for you. You won't be asking them, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, right, the, right. that's the goal. Yeah. But, but it, you know, I found though, um, with conventions, uh, and, and I'll, I, I, I gotta say this too about conventions because I feel very strongly about it. But, you know, when I started doing this in 95, 96, there might be two or three conventions a month somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, now there's four five, six or more a week. Right. All over the world. Yeah. And, you know, when you go to a convention, I went to one in Toronto one time, uh, and it was the second time I was there, the third time I was there. But I remember somebody goes, you know, what do you think the state of anime is? And I'm like, well, we're in Toronto and there's 27,000 people here (laughs) at this convention. And this exact same weekend in Boston is Anime Boston, and there's about 22,000 people. So... You know, if you lived in between the two, you could, you know, in that area of the world, I think they could draw from each other. Mm -hmm. And apparently there's over 50,000 people at anime conventions, just these two, never mind what's going on elsewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that anime is going just fine. It's doing great, you know, but I think it's really, it shows like you, uh, like this show, it's Mm -hmm. people like you and it's these conventions that are growing these communities of people. Mm-hmm. And of course it's the dub actors, right? But no, I'm kidding. But it, <laughs> it, it's, I was going to argue I, with you. <laughs> I, but I really do think it's these conventions that are growing these communities, you know? And then also, I think you'd have to admit that it's also, um, there's Straight a lot down. of becoming more, more, uh, prolific in the cross pollination of, you know, sci-fi horror, anime, right. comic, you know, there's the, the geek culture is becoming a lot more prominent slash acceptable. Um, exactly. I don't know. I mean, acceptable is the right word, but you know, just no, no, that, no, no, yeah. but you're right. No, yeah. it is. I mean, it's like, you know, Oh, you like this and I kind of like that. And well, we can get together. We can be friends, you know, mm-hmm. that's cool. And right. then it each, each genre feeds off the other and helps the other grow. So, right. I mean, 15 um, years ago, I mean, 15 years ago, 
you know, 20 years ago when you, when you started voice acting, if you told someone, oh, I'm a fan of anime, uh, they would be like, oh, so you're one of those people, <laughs> you know, like you're, you're that level of, of geek, uh, that is kind of, uh, unaccessible, right. inaccessible to the mainstream. Whereas now it's like, uh, yeah, I'm a fan of anime. Oh yeah. I've seen some anime. Yeah. I've heard of that. You know, not really, you know, there, there's less aversion to it. There's more open-mindedness of you know, oh yeah, let me know some t- series that you like. Let me check out this movie that you said uh, mm-hmm. was good. And, well, yeah. I mean, I can tell you, you know, I can go to my kid's school and, I, you know, at least once a week, I have some kid come up to me and just go, Mr. Swayze, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I'm a huge fan. <laughs> yeah. like, and you're like, you know, and they, my kids are like, yeah, that's my dad, you yeah, know, and cool. it's a small little private school. It's not even a, you know, right. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, geekdom is 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 spreading its wings and and becoming a a very formidable force and i think that's fantastic yeah all right well john thanks again i really appreciate you taking the time um and we look forward to hearing about your exploits in uh at the convention this weekend and uh again boy and the beast coming out on march 4th you can get tickets at funimationfilms.com and thank you again john we really appreciate it well, listen, guys, thank you. And I will say this, I, uh, I, I, I'm, I don't have that many yet, but I'm trying to reach 10,000 followers on Twitter and I'm at 1,004. So okay. we're trying to hit 10,000 too. We're at 4,000. Oh, <laughs> so good for you. Have, good for you. We have that goal together and I will, uh, I'll definitely put that out there when we get this posted. We'll see if we can throw a few more uh, followers your way. All right. Likewise, man. Thank you all so much. Y'all have a great night. All right. Thank you, John. You have a good night. Take care.